Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here and welcome back guys for what is going to be another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. I'm wishing you all a happy Friday and hopefully you all have a wonderful weekend ahead of you. If you are new to this channel and finding my videos for the first time today, don't forget to check out that subscribe button because we drop an update just like this one around 1pm UK time every single day to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space but also the broader markets. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be starting the video off with a clip of Donald Trump, who I know is a very polarizing figure, but we are going to stay apolitical on the matter, talking about Bitcoin and his recent views. And they're actually quite positive given his prior views, which were very negative. And he was somebody that was really in favor, actually, of actually um, banning Bitcoin. Now, whether this is something, uh, a political move or not, is still to be seen. I think there's a lot of candidates in the US that are using Bitcoin as a kind of, um, I guess, favoring mechanism in regards to their campaign. Some people kind of solely are, are, are basing it around that. Um, so we will be starting there. Then we're going to be looking at what the European Central Bank tweeted yesterday in the article that they released, which talks about Bitcoin um, being a naked emperor's new clothes, um, which is rather interesting. And they say it's essentially failed, but I'm actually going to argue the contrary. If you look at Bitcoin against uh, Argentinian pesos, if you look at it against the euro, if you look at it against the dollar, if you look at it against pretty much any currency out there, it's gained ground. Uh, and I actually think on the contrary, uh, we're going to be talking about Capo, the infamous Twitter account, now calling uh, for a final leg up before complete capitulation, basing this on Elliott Wave Theory. Um, I actually know, I'm not an Elliottitian myself, I have studied a little bit of Elliott Wave Theory. We do have some books on it behind us that we've read. Uh, certainly the Bloomberg book I found was a good one. Um, but weak argument, in my opinion. Then we're going to be talking about the Bitcoin chart, where we're at, looking at the Amazon chart, bringing up Amazon, because people are very worried that both Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos are selling stock. Now, this is a and going to be an amazing test and really show you guys who you should be following. Should we be following a technical analyst giving you his views on the market based on the charts, i.e. me? Or should you be following the news flows and these people that are doom and glooming based on Jeff Bezos selling stock? We have a higher target for Amazon. These people are ultimately um, depicting a crash for Amazon based on what Jeff Bezos is doing with his stock. We'll talk about crack and file to dismiss the SEC lawsuit. And then I want to talk about AI, and of course, we're going to be bringing Sam Altman uh, up in regards to that. So a hell of a lot to get into, guys. Let's start the video off by playing a clip of Donald Trump now giving his recent views on Bitcoin when asked. Isn't the next logical step for you to embrace Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin, obviously, is decentralized. The government can't get its hands on it. What about Bitcoin all the young people, including African-Americans, who are, are very interested in it? Well, a lot of people are doing it. I always liked one currency. I, could, I call it a currency. I like the dollar. But a lot of people are doing it. And frankly, uh, it's, it's taken a life of its own. You probably have to do some regulation, as you know. But many people are uh, embracing it. And more and more, I'm seeing people wanting to pay Bitcoin. And you're seeing something that's interesting. So uh, I can live with it one way or the other. I've always liked one really powerful thing, and that's called the dollar. Yeah. Very interesting, and we thought we would throw that in there. Let's now look at what the ECB, the European Central Bank, said about Bitcoin yesterday. Bitcoin has failed to become a global decentralized digital currency. Instead, falling victim to fraud and manipulation. The recent approval of the ETF doesn't change the fact that Bitcoin is costly, slow and inconvenient, argues the ECB blog. And this, of course, is the post of theirs. Now, has Bitcoin failed as a global currency? Well, if you ask many people across the world in countries where they're seeing hyperinflation, Turkey is a great example for um, as an example. My barber is Turkish. It's a real mess over there. I know I say that my barber's Turkish. You're going to be uh, all thinking, uh, wait, you, you, what hair have you got to cut? But um, to move away from that, you know, Bitcoin, I think, has provided a lifeboat. And if you look at Bitcoin against pretty much every currency out there, including the US dollar, it's gained ground and it's done well. And it's actually um, acted perhaps not fundamentally as a currency in regards to used every day. And I, I, I don't think that Bitcoin is going to be used in everyday purchasing but it has acted as an external store of value um, and a bet against the fiat systems. And it's been nothing but a success, in my opinion. So I don't give much too much sway to this. They talk about how it's essentially used for illicit transactions. You can even see the customer notes on here is from Chainalysis found that only 0.34% of the transaction volume in cryptocurrencies in 2023 was attributed to criminal activity. 
which is hilarious given the fact that 1% of uh, the EU GDP um, was essentially accounted for illicit activity. Activity. Um, you know, this is the kind of game that they play. Bitcoin is a real threat, I believe, to their systems. Let's talk about the infamous Capo. He is back again. I am kind of leaning more towards the fact that this guy is a bot at this point. Uh, and essentially, he's talking. Somebody that's been so wrong on the markets for so long um, is now sticking to the bearish kind of tune that he has. Based on Elliot, I mean, uh, you know, interesting. Um, certainly the politicians that I follow don't have this. I think this guy is a bot and a lot of what he says is really to gain uh, attention and attraction. Let's talk about the Bitcoin chart. You guys know the plan. Um, you know, when the market, the markets love you and that's the attitude that you want to have. You know, you don't want to get into this kind of negative attitude of, oh, why me? Why are my stops always getting hit? Why are, you know, be on the right side of things and the best way to be on the right side of things is to understand the broader trends and that's where we're at and we have uh, been given extremely good feedback for what we've thought bitcoin was going to do now since we re-entered it back at the start of 2023 we literally have altcoins that are up three four hundred percent at this point it's fantastic you know we're doing very well on the market you want to lot of my portfolio I did become a patron you know what to do in regards to that but we have looked at amazon to bring amazon up again because of course, everybody calling for downside for Amazon and, and, and compared it to Bitcoin and where Bitcoin's kind of at. So I'm just gonna find Amazon very quickly. We have now a higher target for Amazon around about $263. Okay, now remember Amazon makes up a big part of the stock market, Bitcoin's an uptrend against the stock market. This is kind of where Bitcoin's at, it's broke and now it's coming or could come back for a retest before then seeing higher continuation. Just to switch between the two very quickly. You know, you can see this, and this is very common, very typical. Bitcoin is going to progress, and we do have, based on this pattern, higher targets to around about 150K, which aligns with our macro view of things. We are still kind of waiting for alt season to, to happen. I do think Bitcoin dominance is going to roll. I do think ETH BTC is progressing as we wanted it to. Just to bring that up very, very quickly. You know, you are getting a good bounce here. I do think this continues, and I do also think others' dominance is ready to pop you know not only has it triggered the broader pattern that we've got followed the smaller pattern that we've got this is is getting ready to really rock and roll and we are seeing altcoins like hbar and others um that are doing spectacularly for us um so the plan is still very much in play lots of things to watch and that are going on the dollar's still something i'm a little bit uncertain of really is the back end trade of all this s p obviously after the nvidia kind of fears doing well it sucks to be a bear, guys. Um, and to move on very quickly, we have news that Kraken files to dismiss the SEC uh, suit. Dangerous president for overreach. The SEC suit against Kraken has, has no limiting principles and gives the agency too wide of an authority, the crypto exchange argues. It's good to see all of this, um, all the people who have a lawsuit against them actually coming out and fighting it. And the SEC hasn't got a great track record when it comes to crypto specifically. They do more broadly. They usually win, um, given the kind of unlimited resources they have. But it's nice to see the likes of Ripple, Coinbase. They're all fighting this. And I think they will uh, arrive victorious. Uh, and maybe there's some kind of a, you know, we've got headway in the UK. Maybe there's some kind of an election narrative um, that accompanies this. The last little thing that I want to talk about is would Sam Altman's $7 trillion ask really secure our future? So what's he asking for $7 trillion for? Well, we all know we saw the release of Sora. It is quite simply amazing. They reckon that the vast majority of content, uh, if you've read Henry Kissinger and Schmidt's book on AI, it's a good book, really worth reading. Um, they kind of use AI as a way to replace like media and things like this. And, and there needs to be regulations around it. And there's, there is this move to control the internet um, more broadly. And you're going to see probably more dangers with the internet in regards to hacks, false information that they're going to, the problem action, reaction solution. Um, so they're going to cause problems. They're going to bring in uh, solutions and it's all going to be to the um, liberty destruction of you guys. Uh, and AI is going to play a role in that. But Sam Altman, to focus on the topic and not go too far afield, is asking for $7 trillion. Crypto is a one point something trillion dollar market for GPUs, basically. Um, and NVIDIA is a GPU play in regards to the stock market. There are crypto GPU plays. And actually, I think decentralized GPU compute systems are going to be huge. Uh, and we are going to be bringing you those. We invest in a number of them already. And that's kind of behind the Patreon. We have spoken about some publicly. 
Um, but there's quite a lot out there that we're looking at at the moment and we're saying, okay, this is a real craze. This is a real sector. Deep in is one of the greatest opportunities, I think, of our lifetime, certainly within the cryptocurrency space and blockchain is enabling it to essentially happen. Um, and it's a big narrative in the same way that Bitcoin decentralized money. We need to kind of decentralize the internet lords, the cloud lords um, and their systems in for the same reasons that we need to decentralize central banking um, or money itself. Uh, uh, um, so huge narrative. We're going to be updating you a lot on all of this. Um, and really, that's all I've got for you guys. So it's just a case of sticking to the plan as it relates to crypto. There are going to be pullbacks on the way. There could still be that retest um, for Bitcoin of the neckline. It doesn't have to happen. Don't bet on downside in an uptrend. You know, and just get on the side of the trend as an investor. Don't bother trying to trade with leverage. If you see somebody who has a chart and there's like little dots at the highs and lows perfectly and they say these are great signals and stuff like that, ask for a PL. Always be um, critical of, of, of technical analysis because people way too, it's way too overcomplicated. It doesn't need to be that way. Traditional technical analysis, in my opinion, is to be championed. Guys, that's really all I've got for you in this video. If you've enjoyed the content, like, appreciate it as a comment, and I will see you all in the next one, hopefully. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a fantastic Friday.